While her husband Prince Harry supported her from the front row, Meghan Markle celebrated International Women's Day in true Hollywood style by participating in a star-studded panel at South by Southwest. At the esteemed festival, the 42-year-old Duchess of Sussex led a panel discussion on breaking barriers and women's representation alongside actress Brooke Shields and veteran news anchor Katie Couric. Glancing proudly around the stage after introducing herself to the public as Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan sat down with the other panelists for the conversation, during which she spoke openly about the hatred she endured while carrying her children. The Duchess of Sussex, who left her $14.65 million Montecito residence on Thursday to go to Austin, looked stunning in a $1,000 Juliva Heritage silk maxi skirt and matching $975 button-up blouse. She completed the ensemble with some large gold earrings. Harry, 39, was spotted looking up at his wife from the front row during the panel discussion and cheering Meghan on with the other guests. Harry and Meghan went on a date night on Thursday at the Austin location of Soho House, a premium members club. Marcus Anderson, a Soho House tycoon who played a key role in bringing the Sussexes together in the early stages of their relationship, joined Prince Harry in the front row. First, the Duchess gushed about how excited she was to be on the panel and then she highlighted all of the female-focused projects that she and Prince Harry work on together through their non-profit, the Archwell Foundation. It's such an amazing way to celebrate International Women's Day, and I'm so excited to be here with such incredible women on this panel. She said. She continued by talking about a variety of subjects, such as hate she's encountered on social media, especially during her pregnancy with Archie and Lilibet. The requirement for increased diversity and truthful portrayals of mothers and women in the media. Fighting for the safety of kids and teens on social media while complimenting Prince Harry for being a hands-on and incredible partner. Recounted how, at the age of 11, she spearheaded a campaign to alter a sexist soap commercial. Meghan gave an explanation of the three important reasons she and Harry had decided to become involved with the initiative when questioned about the Archwell Foundation's funding of a recent report that called for true portrayal for moms on television. I think from our standpoint, and certainly from mine, there are three key reasons why it felt vital to see the information they were going to be pulling from this report, the woman said. My husband and I, our foundation, helped to fund it. I was really interested to see what the report would reveal because, personally, I've always loved understanding women and our stories, lived experiences, and shared experiences. As women, we frequently see inaccurate or misleading reflections of ourselves in the media, sometimes to our detriment and sometimes in accurate ways. Therefore, it felt significant to have the data to determine what we can do to advance that and ensure that women are truly feeling seen in a way that is representative of who we are, how we live, and how we navigate the world, from a charitable perspective. There is undoubtedly more work to be done in order to support mothers and women through our foundation. You can start by taking paid time off. She continued by saying that as Archwell's production division expands its slate of projects, both on screen and in podcasts, it is concentrating more on its own portrayal of women and moms. Megan hosts a podcast called Archetypes, which she started as part of the Sussex's lucrative partnership with Spotify. After the pair broke up with the well-known streaming service, the podcast moved to Lemonade Media. Megan continued by talking about the hate she encountered online when expecting her two children, Lilibet, who is now two, and Archie, who is now four. When asked about the trolling she had experienced, she responded, I keep my distance from social media right now for my well-being but the bulk of the bullying and abuse I was experiencing in social media and online was when I was pregnant with Archie and with Lily, and with a newborn, with each of them. Just consider that and try to figure out why people could be so vicious. It's harsh, not catty. Why would you do it during such a delicate and precious moment as a pregnant woman or a mother? Noting that a large portion of the hate she was seeing online was coming from women attempting to undermine other women, she questioned how anyone could do that to an expecting or new mother. Megan went on, 
it's women completely spewing that to other women, and I cannot make sense of that. Megan talked on the impact that online hatred had on her during her pregnancies and the early stages of parenthood. She then talked about the efforts being made by the Archwell Foundation to make sure that moms and women feel more supported and protected when they are online. As she talked about the dizzying effects that social media can have on a new mother, Meghan acknowledged Prince Harry's support, calling him their incredible partner and hands-on dad to their two children. The impact that social media can have on new moms, even just the sleep deprivation caused by their constant scrolling, the speaker stated. However, it can also be extremely disorienting for children to witness this picture of motherhood, which appears flawless, even though we all know that it's not. Everyone is aware of how messy it is, among the many blessings in my life, I consider myself fortunate to have an amazing partner. I consider my spouse to be a true blessing because he is such a hands-on father and a strong supporter of my family and me, however, not everyone receives the same degree of assistance. Therefore, our goal is to simply implement precautions so that women, and mothers in particular, do not feel even more exposed when they go online and instead experience a sense of security. The importance of representation for young females was brought up by Megan as she started the conversation about how society should work towards making the world more egalitarian. You can believe that is possible if, as a young girl, you see yourself in a position of strength, power, or leadership, the speaker stated. It is inconceivable for most people to imagine that they can have that level of success, joy, or strength if they look out on the screen or out in the world and they see no one that looks like them. Subsequently, Megan was asked by former Today anchor Katie if she would retell the story about when you wrote that letter to PNG, alluding to an incident in which the Duchess, then 11 years old, fought against a sexist Procter & Gamble campaign. I'm not sure if everyone has heard this story, but it's amazing, even for a young child, Katie continued, then expressed regret for breaking the panel's flow. Megan gladly consented to tell the gathering the story, beaming with pleasure, having brought it up at other occasions in the past. The boys in my class at the time responded, yeah, that's where women belong, in the kitchen, to a dishwashing liquid commercial Megan remembered seeing when she was around 11 years old. Women all over America are fighting greasy pots and pans, the commercial said. And when I was 11 years old, I just thought that was frustrating. As a result, I started writing a lot of letters and put pen to paper, and they changed the commercial to feature people all over America. Looking Back at it today is amusing because, in the days before social media, when your reach is so much wider, all you had was an 11-year-old and a pen and paper, however. It only goes to demonstrate how powerful your voice can be in bringing about a significant change for a large number of people if you are aware that something is wrong and you are using it to advocate for what is right. Your voice is not small, it just needs to be heard, Megan said. Earlier this week, the festival revealed Megan's participation in the panel, praising the Duchess as a visionary female leader and stating that she and the other attendees would talk about women's representation in media and entertainment and breaking barriers, as well as challenging stereotypes. Breaking barriers, shaping narratives, how women lead on and off the screen was the panel's South by Southwest description. Women's representation in media and entertainment has come a long way, but there's still much to be done, especially for women of color and mothers. The prevalence of social media has elevated the risks, resulting in a hazardous atmosphere that has caused significant mental health problems, especially for adolescent females. On International Women's Day, we'll hear from Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, a feminist and champion of gender equity and human rights as well as a New York Times best-selling author. We'll also hear from Emmy Award-winning journalist and New York Times best-selling author Katie Couric, as well as two-time Golden Globe Award-nominated actress, model, and entrepreneur Brooke Shields and author, sociologist, pop culture expert, and diversity, equity, and inclusion consultant at Peoplism Nancy Wang Yuan. The annual South by Southwest Festival, also referred to as South by Southwest, takes place from March 8 to 16 and honors the integration of technology, 
cinema, music, education, and culture. According to the organizers, Megan's discussion will be sponsored by the 19th, a nonprofit newsroom that covers women, politics, and policy, in association with her and Harry's Archwell Foundation. According to reports, Meghan and Harry landed in Austin on Thursday. They were seen dining at Soho House, a cute homage to their first date, which took place at one of the premium members' clubs in London. Witnesses reported to people that they saw the happy pair enjoying dinner, saying that Harry was quite lively the entire time. They were happy and in excellent spirits. The unidentified bystander told people that they were really laid back and seemed content to be around the positive vibes at the lively venue. The Sussexes' date night occurred nearly eight years after their first get-together at London's Soho House. They had such a good time that the next day, they went back, and it's thought they took a private black-and-white picture of each other laughing in a photo booth. In his shocking book, Spare, Harry talked candidly about his first date with his wife, revealing to his dismay that he had indeed been late to the location. After writing, he exclaimed about how beautiful he thought Megan was when he first saw her. Red-cheeked, puffing, sweaty, half an hour late, I ran into the restaurant, into the quiet room, and found her sitting in a small area on a low velvet sofa in front of a low coffee table, he wrote. He remarked, I'd seen so many glossy, glam pictures of her from TV sets and fashion shoots, but there she was, in the flesh, with no frills, no filter, and even more beautiful. Only one day had passed since a court had ordered the Department of Homeland Security to turn over confidential information regarding the Duke's immigration documents so he could examine it and choose whether or not to make it public before Harry's appearance at the festival. This came about as a result of a hearing held by Judge Carl Nichols in Washington, D.C. last month, where the DHS and the Heritage Foundation, which is requesting the materials release, spoke. The documents are being sought for release by the Heritage Foundation as part of a Freedom of Information request that was made last year in response to Harry's admission of drug use in both his memoir and the Sussex's Netflix documentary. The Duke's revelation raised doubts about whether or not he had spoken the truth on his immigration documents, which ask visitors to the U.S. to indicate whether or not they are currently drug addicts or abusers. A border official might ban the Duke from entering the country or remove him from it if he lied on his admission documents. As per the most recent update, Judge Nichols informed the DHS that the arguments presented were not detailed enough for him to reach a conclusion. He requested declarations from the organization in charge of immigration policy detailing the specific harm that would result from the Duke of Sussex's visa application being made public.